Hello everyone and welcome back to a stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.8 and in this stream I am going to bring blueberries back with me um bring a blueberry bring a wait bring a blueberries on duna back to Ker blueberries grow on duna that's something okay I am in Northern California, so I'm mostly free of fires. In fact, there isn't even smoke around here. Last year, there was a lot of smoke. Last year, there was a lot of smoke. This year, not so much smoke, so not a huge problem. Let me cut down the volume of that. Um, but yeah, California is big. There are many places. I don't even have... Uh, in the Bay Area, they have cell phone problems and internet problems. Here, we do not have that. Not that the internet was particularly good around here in the first place. It fell, well, I mean, no, the planet is, I mean, we've been killing off species for quite a while now, to be honest. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, since the Industrial Revolution, what, it's been like millions of species have died. So, I mean, the planet will be fine. I mean, in bulk, I mean, the life on the planet might not be so great. But, uh, so, I mean, the problem is how fast can species catch up to this uh, change your biomes and for trees it's like not so much so yeah. anyway so we have to find blueberries and have a Kerbal pick it up and return it to Kerbin yeah I, I can't resist finding blueberries on Duna oh yeah I'm gonna be making a game in Unity yes mine's is gonna be a Mars game I'm thinking of sort of an orthographic view, sort of like a Fallout kind of thing. Fall, Fallout-like RPG, not unlike Outer Outer Worlds, but I can't do 3D modeling to that extent, so I have to keep the camera a decent ways away, otherwise if I try and zoom in too close, they'll realize that my 3D models are crap. So, just, just zoom out there and uh, go at that point. Blue's perspective. Uh, yeah, I was thinking of more like an Arcanum thing. I mean, the camera will be tilted sort of at an angle towards the ground. So, uh, like a 30 degree thing. So, there'll be a limited scope for... The, the, the character will not view the horizon, really. So, it'll be a fixed camera at that point. In fact, I've already figured out how to chop up a fairly large map and rendered a map in chunks so that's a good thing i was planning on an eight kilometer by eight kilometer map so it would not be a good thing to load the entire map at the same time for me i'm not gonna do everything from scratch and from what i've seen the rigging tutorials do not take that long you can always tell how hard something is by how long the youtube video on it is <laughs> there's logic for you Site uh, Mixamo? Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay, here we go. And launch. Instance? Well, I mean... You mean like instantiate instancing? Because, yeah, obviously. No, I've got a lot of Unity tutorials. <laughs> um, I've got a lot of, like, Udemy... This thing is shaking like crazy. Hold on. Uh, no, I want a root part, actually. Hello, Texan. Welcome. We're gonna try to land a base on the moon and then pick up blueberries from Duna. I'm not joking. Data structures. It's all... It's all CSV spreadsheets. <laughs> uh, I, I have to run through, like, a lot of hours of tutorials, and once I've... Once I've exhausted all of them I'll seek other things but between the tutorials I think I'm gonna have quite a lot of it covered real life flight simulator in his garage with oh yeah yeah those things that that just makes me too jealous <laughs> I can't I can't even bear to watch it's just causes me such jealousy Never hated being a poor student until- uh, well, if you see that, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh good, it's not the- I mean, I normally like the um, 
clamshell one, but the clamshell one has been really not separating very easily. Well, I mean, you know I know about data in general because of R and my dear fondness for comma separated values. But Late over there in Germany? Yeah, I try normally on Saturdays and Sundays to stream at uh, Europe Happy Time. Um, that was uh, So tomorrow I'll be streaming at 10 a.m. my time, which should still be 5 p.m. your time. And then we'll have daylight savings and then it'll be 6 p.m. your time. But on the weekends I stream at that time so you guys can watch. Uh, unfortunately, weekdays are different. Why, why does it seem like the game is like performing slower? Or either that or I'm still on my chocolate high. Okay, so I gave I gave out Halloween candy last night. And I gave gave out almost all of it. But I had some Kit Kats and Reese's left over. And I also drank an inordinate amount of coffee list yesterday. So I think I'm still still on a sugar high with a lot of caffeine. My commsat is on the opposite side of the globe, obviously. This is not good. What did somebody say? Hmm? No, that doesn't work. Gosh darn it. Here I am talking away. I didn't extend the stupid high gain antenna. This has not gone so well already. <laughs> well, maybe I can land it. But this is a poodle. It's not very good at landing. Found the la single last Jaffa cake in the house. Very good. I baked potato bread today for some reason. The details I'm interested in are the story. This was a base for the moon. I didn't put parachutes on a base for the moon and even if I did Lack of communication means that I wouldn't have been able to deploy it anyway. Okay. This time I have to remember, wait until the commsat is overhead. Okay, well the station is in a good position to help. Alright. Now it'll work. <laughs> uh, how's the video? Is it choppy or anything? Yeah, I, uh, RimWorld will be part of my, uh, part of my inspiration. Oh, let's check comms. Uh, yeah, we have a line to Station 1, so... And it can communicate to the stuff on Moon and Minmus. Yeah, I mean, the key is just to work on one system at a time. And not try and tackle too much. Otherwise, it can get overwhelming. Oh, Barafel, don't do that. That's dangerous. Nutella is definitely dangerous. We made orbit! Things are looking up. <laughs> God. It's gonna be one of those days. Alright, that should be good enough. Uh, that's a good enough time to. Minimum risk? Well, only you are qualified to assess that, obviously. It would be significant risk for me. <laughs> That much I know. Build a single stage rocket that goes to EVE and enter EVE without breaking apart. Is breaking apart... I don't... I try not to land on EVE, but uh, is breaking apart a uh, normal thing that happens on EVE these days? Wasn't usually a huge problem before. Anyway, you said enter EVE, but you didn't say anything about leaving EVE. Entering EVE is the easy part. You just want a single stage that could land on Eve in one as one blob. Exports. Oh, okay. All right. That's it. That's the challenge. 
This doesn't seem like much of a challenge. Eve window. I mean, that seems... I don't like doing challenges. And that doesn't seem very difficult. Which makes me puzzled. The only reason I even consider it is because I'm puzzled, because that doesn't even seem like much of a challenge. <laughs> so I'm wondering if there's some catch. Oh no, you didn't say that. See, see, I asked that. You didn't say to exit out of Eve back to Kerbin part. You want the full... You want the full Eve now. Yeah, that's... That's more annoying. You have to do the... Basically, you'll have to drill for... If it's a single stage, you have to drill for ore and everything. That's so annoying. And I don't know if it's even possible for single stage, single stage. Because anything that can take off from Eve and get back to Kerbin will already be a single stage that could... Whatchamacallit? Launch from... Launch from Kerbin and get to Eve. I mean, anything that can do that in a single stage would already... I think I've overdone it. Um... Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, if you can get out of Eve, then you've already got something that can handle Kerbin. I don't know if you can get out of Eve in one stage. What's the Delta V requirement for... for making orbit around Eve from its surface? You can't do much else once you're not... yeah. Yeah, so we wouldn't be able to get back to Kerbin. Six thousand. What's the? Let me just quickly calculate the theoretical maximum for one of these tanks. Um, we wouldn't be able to use a nuclear engine. So, what's the highest ISP that you can get out of something that could actually take off from Eve? Single stage, but it didn't look fun. Oh, I guess. Uh, I guess you could do jet. Uh, uh, is there. It, it can air breathing work with Eve? Le involved a lot of ion engines. Well, I'm just trying to get to the getting to orbit around Eve part. I mean, if we say that 340 ISP is the best you can do, the theoretical best of for any stage in Kerbal Space Program of 340 ISP is 7,300 seconds. Uh, sorry, 7,300 meters per second, so. You're cutting it close on the whole getting to orbit part, even. And yeah, after you get into orbit, you have to use, probably you have to use ion engines to get back to Kerbin. But, again, that's, that part is less important than the whole getting back into orbit around Eve part. But anyway, Bradley Whiston has already done it, so good. No worries. It is. It has already been done. And there ain't a whole lot of variation you can do on that theme. My job? Uh, I, I, I have a history degree. But don't, don't let your job determine what you can actually do. <laughs> so, you know. Anyway, it's just an algebra equation at the end. You don't know what a history degree does? Not a whole lot. <laughs> now, what the heck was it that I got wrong last time? I, I was looking at something and I... I think it maybe it was just me not paying attention. But anyway, we need to land where there's a concentration of ore. We're equatorial, that's probably a bad thing. Hmm, ore. Historian? No, I mean, at one point, uh, had a credential to teach history in high school. Um, I'm just a substitute teacher now. I swear this, the patches look different than they, I thought this crater was where we were aiming to land in. And it had ore in, but it doesn't now. Okay, well, we want to pick a place that's sort of facing Kerbin. 
I guess we'll try to land it around here. Not the most... I mean, it's not a nice little crater-like location, but at least it's something. So yeah, uh, right around here would be good. You're going to love the blueberry. I don't even know... Uh, is the blueberry gonna be like a tree? Or... What is the blueberry gonna look like? Don't tell me it's a rock, because that doesn't make any sense. But is it like a duna tree? I mean, frankly, the, the exciting part is the surprise that Duna has blueberries to begin with, so I don't know. I feel like I feel like the the surprise has sort of been revealed already. Climb, <laughs> climb. Knowing what I know about the climbing mechanic, I think I'll forego the whole climbing portion and just use the EVA pack. Thank you very much. Um. It's looking like we're gonna land in the crater, or I think we gotta hop over that one. So we're, we're gonna land over here, I think. Oh, we, we've got stargazing. Hey. That is an activity, very good. Start a fire, what? Things have escalated. Fire pit in several trees? Wouldn't the fire, like, obscure the stars? I mean... Part burning things is part of the routine. Huh, what is this, the Outback? Okay. Or California now, I guess. Yeah, we don't have to make any effort to burn things around here, apparently. I should have put little ladder things down there. Alright, anyway, that fulfilled the contract, right? Alright, that's done. Wait a second. This has all the things for that orbital station around Ike. I guess we'll just send this to Ike because I think it'll have enough Delta V to do the deal. That seems good. Yeah, we'll just send one of these to Ike for that. But we need that Duna Ejecta. We're gonna need a mission to land on Duna to get that Ejecta and blueberries. Hmm. Do the contracts have them at the same biome? Polar Lowlands Southeastern Mountain Range South Pole Biomes for Duna Ejecta. For blueberries, Eastern Canyon, Midland Canyon, or Southern Basin. I haven't visited many of these, to be honest. Uh, Southern Basin sounds like it might be the closest thing to Polar Lowlands Southeastern Mountain Range or South Pole. So I think we'll be aiming for the south. But we'll probably, we'll definitely have to uh, do a hop. We'll need to do a hop. So there's an orbital station around Ike. This one has weird requirements, so we can't do that yet. We also have to position a satellite in a specific orbit of EVE and science data from space around Gilly. We've already got a satellite. Uh, or no, we, did we bring that back? Well, no, this is EVE probe. Satellite in a specific orbit of EVE. It wants a thermometer on there, and it wants... Oh, I, I think we weren't able to get into that orbit. We didn't have enough Delta V, that's right. Okay, so we'll probably send one more of those to Eve. Let's see which one we go to next. I should really... I keep saying I should bring my protractor, but I keep forgetting. Okay, I think we'll go with that. So... It's just any science from data around, yeah, science from Gilly and then that one satellite orbit. Our previous satellite should be able to handle that. So it should be quick, hopefully. But then our Duna encounter might occur while we're on the way. So I have to juggle two things without 
Kerbal Alarm Clock. Shocking. Okay. Before any wind br uh, knocks it down, throttle up and go! Uh, whoa, 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 get back over there, get back over there. Come on. Ah! Come on, Bobcats, you can gimble, you can gimble. Get back over there. Ah! Don't overcorrect. Don't overcorrect. I should have picked that hex core instead of this one. I should probably auto strut too. I think it's the probe wiggling at the top. That's making it hard to control a bit. Yeah, we end up with this furring piece here. Well, a lot of people found me from YouTube, yeah. No alert, just happened to check Twitch. I mean, even Twitch itself doesn't alert people when I'm streaming. Yeah, I've played Astroneer. Sure. Uh, cute little game. Not for any great length, though. I wouldn't say I accomplished anything of note. Except building a really, really long trail of those connector thingies. I forget what they're called now. Extenders, yeah, yeah, extenders. Yeah. It was either Fallout or Mass Effect. Did it look like Fallout or Mass Effect? I would imagine it's one of those two. Fallout 4, probably. A real used RCS nozzle from what? Up oh, there's an encounter. Okay, we'll take that. I picked up this game called Breathe Edge because it's on sale. It seems interesting. Like a space comedy of sorts. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it. It's on Steam, of course. Oh, your RCS is from a Gemini test? Wow. A Gemini nozzle is good. I mean, obviously, anything from a crude thing... I mean, a potentially crude thing. In that case, it's just a test, but still. Uh, that's a notch above, like, say, an RCS... Whoa, why are you drifting? Uh, from... Oh, I don't know. A random probe, like... Some sort of satellite or something. Comsat. I mean, the only reason that seems likely is because I know of something else. Yeah, a ground test. Oh, darn, I can't link it. Oops, went too far. Hold on, let me get the link. I know that that is potentially feasible because of another thing that somebody got once. There we go. Uh-huh, yep. <laughs> now that's... That's something else. <laughs> It was a mock-up, obviously, but uh, apparently uh, they were selling these sorts of things. <laughs> so, no, he, he didn't get to keep it at his house or anything. It went to a museum, but yeah, yeah. The reason uh, we had a different satellite around here already, uh, that one up there, that Eve probe, but because we had two satellite contracts that are going in opposite directions, we couldn't do both. Turned out. Just didn't have enough. Thought I would have had enough, but turns out that I underestimated how much I needed to reverse direction on our orbit. So this is the first moment where I wish I had the Kerbal Alarm Clock. 
in the end, aside from clouds, curb alarm clock is certainly looking important. Okay, so keeping an eye on Duna, we need to be at a 45 degree angle for that. We will time warp here. Okay, um, this... I don't know where the collider on this antenna is. I think this part doesn't have a collider because it's not hitting anything. So it should be safe for me to decouple right now. If I try and retract the antenna, I might lose it. Uh, I mean, I, I'll lose communication, so... Hmm. I guess we'll risk it. Okay, you game. Alright, it worked. Okay, so how much will it take to get into this orbit? I mean, we could go low over EVE and then capture, which would probably be more efficient, but I don't think it's going to cost that much. And then we need to transfer to Gilly to get some Gilly science. Gosh, the Duna transfer is occurring really close to when we're going to be entering EVE SOI. Um... Seems like we should be launching to Duna any time now. How long is that? Four days? I guess we can wait until we do the EVE stuff. Eight days? I don't know. It's all so close. I guess I'll risk it. If we're a little bit late on the Duna window, it should be okay still. Okay, where's that purple planet? There it is. I'm sure we've done all this business before. Maybe as a grand finale, we should dip this into Eve's atmosphere and have it, like, get some science like that. But we'll make sure to do everything else first. Uh, we already made it? I guess so. I thought I was quite a bit off, but hey, if they're happy, I'm happy. Okay, we don't have to hit Gilly just yet. We'll hold off on that. Let's... Well, maybe I'll forget, though. But it'll probably take quite a few days to get to Gilly. So, we should launch to Duna now. I'll have to remember to take care of that later. 